All right, so this is my Western Railroad Supply Company, uh, or WRS for short, model uh, 1203 mechanical crossing bell. This bell uh, is different from the uh, standard WRS zero uh, model 0222 mechanical crossing bell, as I'll show you shortly. But this is the front of it. As you can see, the rain gong, uh, the sh rain shield on it's in pretty decent shape. Same with the gong, it seems to have had some pitting on it. And you can see there's rust all over the front there. I'm not entirely sure where this bell served. I bought it at an antique store here in Huntsville just earlier today. And I think it might have served in Cortland, Alabama at, at, at Jackson Street as that crossing used to have a bell like this looking at Google Street View but that bell was replaced years ago there was another one in the area in Scottsboro at Broad Street but not sure if uh, as Street, but Street View is kinda hard to tell with how grainy it is in the, view, in the pictures you can see the bell on and uh, not entirely sure if it would have been that one as this one has a four inch base on it down here and uh, it also uh, the and uh, it uh, could have also come from another crossing on the uh, West End in a district here in Alabama down near Birmingham as there's also a crossing that featured that is pretty much the same setup as Jackson Street prior to those gateless signals being replaced and the and the bell the original bell on being replaced as well. So I think the Southern Railroad like to use these. But I'm honestly not sh but I'm honestly not sure if, or a few reasons I'll point out in a bit. If we turn to the side here, you can see the latch and you can also see the main reason why this is different from your standard WRS crossing bell as it's got this big box on the back here, which I'll talk more about in a minute. But right here's the latch, which on WRS lat WRS bells, you can always tell them from a Federal Signal or Western Coal and Hayes Mechanical Crossing Bell, as the latch on these things is much different as it's designed to be able to be locked in place like that. You'd have a lock just hanging here. In fact, I actually have a lock. I probably could have brought it out, but oh well. But you just have a lock hanging here, and uh, it would... Uh, point the and it would uh, basically uh, keep it locked until you need to open it but if I loosen the latch and reopen it I'll turn this all the way around so you can see the back here's the back this back if you notice resembles a Western Railroad Supply yeah motor bell as they're called that's basically a mechanical crossing bell with a motor in it rather than an electrical Electromagnets to drive the hammer. However, a bit of an interesting thing is that this one actually isn't a motor bell. In fact, I think most of the supposed motor bells that have been found are actually uh, WRS uh, 1203 bells. First off, there's a f I haven't seen many pictures of actual motor bells, at least ones I can confirm are motor bells. There is a video of one operating here on, on YouTube, and I'll have it linked in the description. But this bell, I'll show you shortly why it's. And but this bell, but the main difference I've noticed between a motor bell and this bell, anyways, is a lack of a logo here. As the motor bell on the video I've seen, it said Western Railroad Supply Company on the back side here. But as you can see, this one's completely blank. Though the door is still cast the same otherwise. Not Again, I'm not sure if that's a way to tell a motor bell from a normal bell, but from a 1203 bell, I mean, but certainly something kind of interesting to think about. The, in fact, the only markings for this bell indicating it's WRS are a label on the inside. I'm just going to pick up the tripod and show you real fast. And also the rain shield where it says on top of it, Western Railroad Supply Company with in fact a little W right there. I don't know what that's for but it is there.
All right, so here is the inside of the bell, where you can obvious, quite obviously that it's not quite a motor bell. I'm going to focus on the right half there with the electromagnets in it. I explain what I do know about it and what I'm not quite sure about. So I'm just going to zoom in over there, and then I'm going to tackle the left half. Now it's also a bit interesting. First off, one thing kind of general knows that when I got this bell, I found it had a... Uh, some dirt daubers had built a nest in it at one point, and it, the nest was left abandoned, I think with even some larvae that died still in the nest. So that's fun. But anyways, I got most of that cleaned out, though you can see there's still some dirt in a few spots, like right up here, for example, and right down here. I'm going to zoom in over on the right half and start talking about that. So right here is the main part of the bell. If I can get this centered. Here's, so yeah, right here is the main part of the bell. You've got the electromagnets, you got the hammer mechanism. You got the, and I've tested the bell, it does work. Right here you got the term, a couple of terminal blocks. I'm not entirely sure what this is, but I think it's related to the what well, I'm going to show you in the other half of it. But the interesting thing to note is that the polarity on these, when you that this bell is designed to operate off of both AC and DC. When you do it on AC, you do it normally. Right here's positive, right here's negative. You hook it up as normal. But when you uh, do it on DC, you have to reverse the polarity, so this would have to be positive, and this would be negative. However, uh, interestingly enough, the little uh, maintenance sheet on the inside of the bell, which is kind of falling apart, as I'll show you shortly, says that you should uh, reverse the polarity at the source, basically from the battery or whatever. However, as I don't want to uh, constantly, un right here I run the bell off my DC transformer, However, as I don't want to constantly, I don't want to unscrew and rescrew in the cables to prop to get this bell wired up whenever I want to run it. I just simply swap the two connections, so I hook up the negative to right here. Or I hook up the negative to here and the positive to here. Right here, of course, is another terminal block, and right here is another terminal block, which connect over to the other half of the bell. Again, I'm not entirely sure what that is. Right here is where you adjust the speed of it. And let's branch this half of the bell. Alright, so here's the other half of the bell, which contains two terminal blocks, right here and right here, and a now, shower, I think that's pronounced, it's S-C-H-A-U-E-R, Manufacturing Corporation, from Cincinnati, Ohio, Electrox Rectifier, which I'm guessing is what helps convert the, uh, branch the AC power to DC power for the electromagnets to run. And it's, uh, it's probably why the polarity on a, when you're running it off of DC, straight DC power has to be reversed. And right here, of course, is the maintenance sheet. However, something interesting to note, which I'm going to zoom in on the bell. In fact, the serial number on this thing is 5036. It is made in the United States. So if anyone knows how to decode the serial numbers on these to get a date, let me know in the comments below. Maybe I can date the spell better, but something interesting to note is on there, once I get this centered, if you notice, right here it says Cincinnati 42, Ohio, which helps me actually date the bell somewhat as the, uh, as they did, as prior to zip codes coming in being created on July 1st, 1963, this, what, that right there, the Cincinnati 42, was basically how they routed the mail in large cities. As each city 
would be split up into multiple districts for the post office. It's pretty much like a pre-zip code type thing. So I'm pretty sure this bell was made before 1963, even though the signal it was mounted on had some safe train lights from, even though the two the railway stops I've seen using these bells have had uh, safe train uh, 12 by 24 inch lights from the 1970s. So I'm not sure if these bells were reused or if both just happened to have the lights on upgrade about the same time. Another one of these, I, another setup like this I've actually found has actually had a safe train mechanical bell. But if we go over here, which I'm going to move this slightly again and refocus, sorry about this, we can see the maintenance sheet. In fact, I'm actually going to just take this guy off of... Oh, okay, sure. I'm actually just going to take this guy off of the thing here to show you this better. We also have the same thing up here for the Western Railroad Supply Company label up here. You can see it's Chicago 8, Illinois. Illinois, which means this sheet at least was manufactured. It was actually printed probably before the changeover at the very least. Same with this one. So it's probably same with the lettering on this guy. So they were probably from around 1963 or before, but I'm honestly not sure. The serial number is 37278. 37278 is the serial number. Right here you can see the model number right there. Number It's a WRS number 1203 crossing bell. Right there's the wiring diagram. It's small and hard to read. And it took me forever to figure out how to wire this thing up. Though reading this right here, this just simply says to adjust the contact, loosen screw 14, and you can't really read much on this because, as you can see there, it's the sheet's all falling. It's all falling apart. There's also another little sheet in here that has also fallen apart. Probably got torn up by the dirt daubers that built nests in here. That said something about crossing and such, which might have actually, which if it was still intact, I probably would have been able to tell where this bell came from, but it isn't, so that's kind of a shame. But yeah, I kind of somewhat interesting here is this bell, because I'd, because I'd actually found this at an antique store. And it's just laying on, it's just sitting next to a door, and I decided to buy it. It's like 240 bucks, so I got a. So yeah, it's a rare, rare bell. I haven't seen any of these on YouTube. At least they're confirmed to be these. I and mean, like I say, if anyone knows how to tell these apart from motor bells externally more easily, let me know, because looking at the pictures I have seen of motor bells, it looks like this is pretty much the same, other than possibly a logo that's missing on these that would be present on a WRS motor bell. Well, not really a logo, more like a, just a little label. So yeah, over and out.